and we have to get started here with the Cresselia into the Annihilate. Neither one of them have energy yet. That's, uh, it looks like Trent doesn't even want to go for it. Goes mm -hmm. for his safe swap there of that Licky Tongue, and now that's received. But this time, the Moon Blast is already prepared before the Body Slam gets there. We'll see how SJ responds in kind. Trent has been known to kind of make this switch a little bit early. He doesn't typically stay into those lead matchups, but the attack drop on the first Moon Blast is definitely a stroke of luck here for SJM's P21. You can see it didn't even look like, it looked like he just actually apologized to Trent and said, yeah. I'm sorry, but this is going to happen. Now this Body Slam is not going to be doing this much. These licks to a normal type Pokemon are not going to be doing that much either. Back to back Body Slams coming through here, but still going to be relatively healthy on SJM's Lickitung. If there's a single word I can use to describe SJ's team here, game number one, it's safe, right? You have your Cresselia lead, you have your Dugong and Lickitung. There's so much bulk, so much HP, and so much neutral play. He's just going to try to outskill Trent here. At this point, too, it's like he's at basically 100 energy, still letting Trent throw another body slam before even one of his has been stored. Now I'm going to go and throw, and I think this is when the body slam spam is starting. Number one coming through right here, unprotected on the Trent's Lickitung. <laughs> exactly, right? Can it and slam it. We're going to see the swap into the Annihilate, trying to get some counter damage Done, but the power whip coming through here from the Lickitung in this kind of battle, right, where both trainers are playing so neutrally, so managing their energy so carefully, it's really hard to tell who has any momentum. We're not going to see really until the dust settles, but Annihilate is looking to disrupt all that with a Shadow Ball here. Yeah, I think uh, there's two shields left on the field. SJM wants to use his first one right away. He's also very happy that Annihilate comes in here because if you look that Dugong in the back would mm -hmm. not be happy with that. Meanwhile, Dugong is really going to be loving what he's going to see with that Altaria. This grass not coming through. If Trent does not shield, this will be enough to knock out the Annihilate. Looks like the Annihilate is going down. Trent lets it go, right? Sacrificing the Annihilate, he's got a healthy Altaria, but he brings the Lickitung instead with a Protect Shield advantage. I think you're right, Amanda. I think that he's predicting anything besides Dugong in the back for SJ. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the Body Slam will not be enough. We see it just as chip damage at this point, bringing the Cresselia down to the yellow, but uh, it's Charge Attack priority. This Moon Blast will be enough to knock out the Lickitung, and they're about to see what what is in the back? There are two shields remaining for Trent, but the real question is, will <laughs> it matter here? The switch timer is going to be up. I think he's going to go for that Moon Blast. First. He wants to get one of those protect shields stripped away right now, and it looks like he is able to do so. I'm sorry for laughing, but you saw SJ kind of look up once he saw the Altaria. He knows what he's going to do next. Moon Blast does not trigger the attack drop, but it doesn't even need to. Double super effective, same type attack bonus. Ice Shards are just going to eat away at the Altaria's HP here as this matchup draws. On. Altaria doing everything it can to stop the momentum that Dugong is about to get, but with no debuff on that either, and the icy wind already available, this Altaria is going to fall from the sky. Trent not even bothering to use a shield on it at this point. It's going to get so low here, and then uh, we have a pretty healthy Dugong, no Annihilate in the back. SJ's staying on it. He's going to be met by Cresselia and Lickitung. SJ is really putting on the pressure, but this is a pretty neutral lead going into game number two. Yep, Lickitung just starting to lick away again, slobbering up this Cresselia, getting it nice and slippery. It doesn't want to even deal with it anymore. Normally trying to catch on that body slam, but not being able to. Actually, Trent stores all the energy and comes into the Altaria saying, hey, you know what? In case there's a Dugong at that point, I don't want my Altaria anywhere near it. This seems like the safest place to bring it in. This is what Out of Pocket tried in game three of their series, right, versus Trent. He's just hard switched in the Altaria. He said, if you have Dugong, I'm going to see it. If you don't, I know what's in the back, right? Going to fire up the Sky Attack against the opposing Lickitung, trying to weaken it, but just like in game number one, so much neutral play to open up this series. Yeah, Lickitung going ahead, taking that like a champ, just still continuing to lick away, getting all of that extra energy, throwing yet another body slam. This won't be quite enough to get it knocked out, but I think it will outpace at this point, too, if Trent doesn't want to throw the Sky Attack, and maybe Sess James will keep that switch alignment he was looking for Sky Attack's reach, but not for the body slam. Does he want to use a shield? That's what you have to account for, right? The Lickitung is just going to pace a little bit more quickly because body slam is less energy cost than the Sky Attack is. It picks up the knockout against the Altaria. Trent kind of resets the board, brings in his Annihilate, looking for a fat counter down, and he gets it. Four punches get in the knockout, but now there's a Gligar in the back. And a Gligar and two shields, but this was pretty good, getting a little bit of extra energy here. Trent has been baiting a lot, and I wonder, I mean, SJ has not said he's been watching his matchups, so maybe he doesn't realize it. He doesn't, not calling that bait right away. 
and this gives him a little bit more energy. Coming in with a combination play, this Luki Tongue is going to throw a body slam. I don't mind this, right? I think that Trent did something really smart. He took the protect shield advantage, sent in a neutral pick like Lickitung, and he recognizes that Lickitung actually can straddle the Shadow Gligar and Cresselia matchups and make a big impact on both. And SJ says, if you can bait, I can bait too. As an aerial ace goes, I wonder if he will pivot out or if he wants to get a little bit of energy for so straight for another aerialist, right? As another body slam is going, gonna completely let this go, putting it on the Cresselia versus the Nihilate in the back. I have to see these two trainers play it out again. I mean, this is high, high level play. A lick going through here and mm -hmm. another aerial ace. Another aerial ace is gonna chip down the Lickitung. Again, there's no easy solution here. There's no Focus Blast Registeel. There's no close combat Berserker. You just have to work your way through this matchup slowly and patiently. Gonna go for the Grass Knot. A bait here from SJ. Does Trent take it? It looks like he is going to take it. He knows that Lickitung can handle a lot. I think he's saving everything for the Annihilate with some energy in the back. Body Slam now coming through. This Cresselia is nice and healthy. The big problem, we've seen it so much with Cresselia, is it's fast attacks. The Cycle Cuts just don't do a lot. It's really going to be those heavier hitting charge attacks that are doing some energy. Getting almost two Grass Knots before doing the next. You said that would have been enough before, Will. I think it's going to be enough now. I think it will. I think the challenge, though, for Trent is to know how much energy is still stored on the Cresselia because the Annihilate is not at full strength. If the Annihilate comes in here and takes a Grass Knot plus the Cycle Cuts, it will get knocked out. So it definitely needs to pace with the double Night Slash and do it as quickly as it can. Grass Knot gets shielded up here. Grass Knot gets shielded. The last shield in the game for Trent. He is countering away. He's trying to get a little bit more going for that Night Slash, maybe hoping for a boost. There is a shield of SJ. I think he knows this is just a Night Slash. He's wondering if he should shield it or not. He's letting that go, knowing that the counter damage is not a lot. He's going to need to throw another one. Grass Knot is reached. Wow. Right there with just one HP, Cresselia able to get to the Grass Knot against the Annihilate. SJ holds on, KOs the Annihilate, and takes game number two in your Indianapolis Grand Finals. We've seen this quite a few times before, but they've always seemed to play it out just a little bit differently. The Cresselia against the Lickitung. Uh, we know that Trent likes to throw that Body Slam right away as he gets it, but this time goes one over, and he's going to throw it before that Moonblast is reached once again. I mean, this is very much what we've seen from the first two games, right? A neutral lead, neutral play, nobody making a hard call. But this time, actually, SJ switches out first, offering up the Lickitung, and it's met by Altaria. This seems like a very, very similar game to the game that we just saw as well. This Lickitung did switch in, Altaria comes in because, again, Trent does not want it to be locked into a Dugong in case that is in the background here. A Body Slam coming through. We did see this happen. I wonder if they want to play it out exactly the same, because if you're Trent, you're thinking, uh-oh, okay, I got to do something a little bit differently if I want the end game to be different in this game number three. Amanda, you're so right, because I'm looking at this matchup, I'm, I'm thinking, why not bring Annihilate into the into the Lickitung? Because you're predicting the Dugong in the back, and that is going to be detrimental down the stretch, because the Lickitung is going to continue to apply pressure with the body slams. This one won't quite knock out, but it's closing in on the second one. Yeah, and I think if, if the last game was any indication, he's going to get to it just at the same time, yes, but this is going to be a little different. Uh, SJ now choosing not to, to shield, and this one is going to knock out the Lickitung, and Trent is going to get a little bit of the alignment, but at what cost here? In comes the Gligar, and if you're at this point, uh, you're trench, you're saying, okay, well, now I know what I want to bring back in. Gonna be that Lickitung. Four wing attack advantage. Shadow Gligar has already leveraged the remaining HP on the Altaria into a huge energy advantage. Gonna fire off the first aerial ace and draw away the first protect shield of the game from Trent's Lickitung. And this is where it becomes very interesting because, of course, with the baiting, of course, with all the switching, the switch timers misaligned, how do you keep track of your opponent's energy here? And this is going to be crucial in the later game. This body slam is going through, getting the first shield from SJ as well. He wants to keep that Gligar healthy. He hasn't seen the third Pokemon. Word shield parity right now between these two players. Dig going to come through. No protect shield from Trent, but he needs this Lickitung to KO the Gligar and give him a shot to close this game with Annihilate. And as I say, oh, look at that. He did try to get a catch, but he immediately swapped in. This is going to be a move blast. This is going to do so much damage to the Annihilate. Trent thought it was Grass Knot, but it's a super effective Moon Blast, and now Annihilate is weak. Gonna try to reach for the Shadow Ball, but the Cresselia will pace with the Grass Knot. It's closing in. Gotta go for the Night Slash, but SJ knows it, and he just Cycle Cuts instead. He completely Cycle Cuts, and I think he's not even gonna shield. He was counting. He's like, okay, there's no way this is even a Shadow Ball yet. Oh, my good condition is just to completely go down. I'm gonna throw at the Licky Tongue when it comes back in. Absolutely astounding energy, control, and patience from SJ. Moonblast comes through, no protect shield, and we're about to crown our Indianapolis Regional Champion. Put your hands up! S. James P. 21!
Congratulations, an incredible, masterful performance.